So hi everyone, today I wanted to uh, do a quick video to do uh, one example problem. Actually, it's a, uh, a problem I really enjoy that I think highlights a lot of, or kind of highlights a lot and kind of shows some of the confusion or how you kind of deal with uh, experimentally in a real kind of lab setting, how you deal with uh, signal aliasing and spectral leakage. So let me just write that, so signal aliasing, just like we talked about in the last video, and spectral leakage. And how we avoid or how we can kind of try to figure out and avoid these issues when we're kind of dealing an experiment. So let's say, for example, um, you're measuring, you know, some signal. Let's say uh, it's uh, you put an accelerometer in kind of a room and for some reason, you know, or some part of your, you know, uh, <laughs> a paper that you've read says that the vibrational, uh, the frequencies that you should measure in this kind of signal you should expect to see some um, frequencies that pop up around 0 0.7 hertz. You should see a signal at 15 hertz. We should see a signal at 168 hertz, uh, at 1,536 hertz, and the final signal at 2,000 hertz. So you're expecting to kind of read all of these different frequencies. Uh, and they're important essentially in this study. You know, again, it could be, you know, some vibration of a beam. It could be the vibration in a room. Uh, it could be the vibration like of a table, for example. Uh, you can see that I shook my table. I realized that this is uh, an online uh, remote teaching, so that didn't uh, come through. But anyways, uh, these are all the frequencies that you need to measure here. So we want to design our system. We want to figure out what is the appropriate uh, sampling frequency, Fs, and the total number of points N that are going to allow us to, to sample and kind of characterize this signal without signal aliasing or spectral leakage. So we need to kind of figure out and see if we could solve this problem. So the first thing, the way that I always want to kind of start off uh, is deal with this one, first, signal aliasing, because we know now from our rule, we could avoid signal aliasing. We know that uh, all we have to do is choose and make sure that our sampling frequency, Fs, is greater than twice the maximum frequency that we're expecting to measure in our signal. So here, the maximum frequency is just this. This is our maximum frequency that we're going to measure, F max. So, assuming that we have no limits, we just need to make sure that this, that our FS is greater than 4,000 hertz. That's it. Now, typically, uh, in some of these problems, uh, you'll also be kind of given information about the data acquisition device that you have. So obviously there's usually some limit, like we can't, uh, unfortunately we can't uh, basically sample infinitely fast. Um, so usually there might be some limit. So sometimes uh, if you're trying to measure um, uh, a signal and avoid a signal aliasing, you might be given a DAC where that's not possible. So you need to make sure that you do not run that experiment or you have to buy a, a DAC with a better uh, frequency resolution to avoid this concept of uh, signal aliasing. Now you could get away with it by um, basically filtering out high frequency or low frequency noise. You can build in basically 4 a filters. But again, if you want to characterize all those frequencies in here, you can't do that if your DAC is limiting. So I'm going to make sure, again, since we have no limits in this problem, I'm just going to say that my sampling frequency for this problem to avoid signal aliasing is going to be 5,000 hertz. That'll work. Now, once we choose that, we also now know what is our Nyquist frequency. What is the highest frequency that we could kind of measure in this uh, using once we've selected the FS? Well, that's just FS over 2. So the, the largest frequency, the last point on our uh, frequency spectrum is going to be 2,500 hertz. So just some information. Again, you always want to kind of start seeing, okay, what can I kind of write down? What can I kind of tabulate in this problem? So... That deals with signal aliasing. We're done with this one. Now for number two, spectral leakage. This one's a little bit more complex, and it helps that we kind of deal with uh, the signal aliasing first. So simplify our lives a little bit easier. So let's think back and look at our frequency spectrum. So we know that our frequency spectrum, we're going to plot our magnitude of our harmonic coefficients. We're going to have frequency on this graph. We know we're going to start at delta F. You all, I mean, you start at zero. And then we're going to finish here at n over 2 delta F, which is, as we showed last time, so we know that delta F is equal to Fs over n. So n over 2 times delta F 
is fs over n, cross out, cross out. What do you know? That's the Nyquist frequency. So again, just get used to kind of that derivation. So that's going to be our highest frequency, that Nyquist frequency that we can measure in our 4A spectrum. But we're going to have lots of kind of frequencies in between here. Oops. In between here. So we're going to have kind of, again, all these different frequencies, and we'll kind of measure here. Now, if I want to avoid spectral leakage, the issue is I want to measure all of these different frequencies, each one of those. So I want to have a delta F, an, you know, I need to pick my delta F so that if I multiply it by any integer number, uh, because we're basically going to be multiplying this by, you know, each, you know, kind of uh, harmonic coefficient. So if I multiply this by some integer, let's say I or R in our kind of notes, I need to make sure that I have a delta F times an integer value that is going to give me each of these values here. So I need to pick my delta F strategic, strategically so that it pops up. I hit, for example, like 0 0.7 is right here and 15 hertz is right here. If we don't choose that, if we don't make sure that this is the case, what, you know, let's say, for example, we chose, um, let's say we chose our delta F is equal to 0 0.5 hertz for example. 0 0.5. That means our first value here, let me erase. That would mean this first value is 0 0.5. And this next value will be 1. Our contribution of 0 0.7 falls in here. So some of it would leak over here. Some of it would leak over here. This is a problem because now we don't know, is this really, um, let me erase a little bit. Uh, is our dominant frequency really 1? Or is it this contribution, some of it leaking from 0.7 or it could leak over here? So we need to make sure that our delta F is chosen so that we hit basically, I want to just label hertz. Uh, that it hits all those values here. So, again, let me erase here. Let's try to figure out. So what we want to do is just pick kind of like a least common multiple. And again, since in this problem we're kind of unconstrained, we could really kind of pick whatever we want. So I want to say, you know, I'm going to say, I know if I pick a delta F of 0 0.1 hertz, I'm going to hit all of these points eventually uh, because we're going to go from 0 0.1 to uh, 2,500 hertz, and we're going to kind of see how many points that we need, are going to need in a second. So we also know that delta F is Fs over N. Well, we now know we've chosen. We want our delta F, we want our fundamental frequency, our frequency resolution to be 0 0.1 hertz. So I'm going to plug that in, 0 0.1 hertz. We also chose previously our Fs is 5,000 hertz. And now we can solve for how many number of points we need to obtain this frequency resolution. So doing a little bit of math, you'll see that N is 50,000 points. Excellent. We could go a little bit further. Well, again, we've solved this problem. This will work. This is a valid solution. And there's multiple valid solutions that will work for this problem because, again, you're unconstrained. But we could uh, analyze a little bit more in our signal. So we could also t figure out, we know that the sampling frequency is 1 over delta T. So you could do that math out and show that delta T is 0 0.0002 seconds. We also know that our period is N times delta T, and that would be 10 seconds. So again, you're getting tons of information just from, once we select that FS, look at we got FS, we got Nyquist frequency. Once we selected our delta F, okay, erase that, delta F was going to be equal to 0 0.1 hertz. We could kind of get all these different values once you kind of plug in here. So. That's kind of the concept. Um, I like this problem a lot because uh, it kind of shows you exactly kind of what you're trying to avoid with uh, spectral leakage and signal aliasing. So again, they're complex topics, but uh, you know you can kind of break them down a little bit more simply. You know, uh, don't be afraid of Fourier analysis. Again, it's you know the equations look nasty, but keep that physical intuition, that picture uh, in your mind, and you're going to be just fine. So uh, I hope that helps kind of clarify some of those topics. Um, let me know if you want a couple more examples. I'd be happy to do so, uh, especially the more quantitative ones. Um, I'd be happy to go through the Mathematica notebook and show you how to kind of write a code to do a discrete Fourier transform. So if that would be helpful, please let me know. Uh, yeah, have a great day, and I'll see you all uh, a little bit later. Bye.